This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2682. When does caffeine withdrawal stop? By Anna Goddard with Healthline.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Welcome back to our Sunday bonus episode. This is where I share an extra article with you from one of the other podcasts in our network. Today's episode is coming from Optimal Health Daily, which covers nutrition, fitness, dieting, and a lot more. You can find that show wherever you're listening to this. And the host, Dr. Neil, actually answers a listener's question every Friday. If you send one in and you're in the US, you can get a copy of our hardcover Optimal Living Daily Workbook totally free, shipped right to your door. All you have to do is send in a relevant health-related question to health at oldpodcast.com and then listen in on Fridays to hear the Q&A episodes. If you're outside of the US, we'll email you a digital version of the workbook. So again, to send in a health-related question to be answered on the Optimal Health Daily Podcast, just email your question to health at oldpodcast.com. And with that, here's Dr. Neil with the post and his commentary as we optimize your life. When Does Caffeine Withdrawal Stop? By Anna Goddard with Healthline.com. The duration of caffeine withdrawal symptoms vary from person to person, but caffeine withdrawal usually lasts at least two up to nine days. Someone who abruptly stops caffeine intake after regular use will usually feel withdrawal effects between 12 and 24 hours after stopping. The peak of withdrawal effects occurs between 24 and 51 hours in. If you regularly consume caffeine, caffeine withdrawal will likely affect you at some point. The more caffeine you drink, generally the worse the withdrawal experience is. Surprisingly, habitual consumption of even just one small cup of coffee per day can produce withdrawal symptoms. How caffeine withdrawal symptoms happen. Caffeine is a psychoactive stimulant that decreases drowsiness by blocking adenosine receptors. Adenosine is a neurotransmitter connected to the body's sleep-wake processes. By blocking these receptors, Caffeine can allow a person to experience a temporary improved feeling of wakefulness. Caffeine also boosts other hormones and neurotransmitters like adrenaline and dopamine, as well as constricts blood flow to the brain. The withdrawal symptoms happen as the brain works to adjust to functioning without caffeine. Fortunately, caffeine withdrawal does not last very long, and the symptoms are considered to be relatively mild. Are some people more prone to caffeine withdrawal? One 2014 study identified genes that affect a person's response to caffeine metabolism. Researchers can use these genetic markers to predict the likelihood that someone is a heavy coffee user. This suggests that your coffee cravings may just be genetic. Caffeine withdrawal symptoms. The more caffeine consumed daily, the more intense the withdrawal symptoms tend to be. Symptom duration varies, but might end between two and nine days. Common caffeine withdrawal symptoms can include anxiety, cognitive effects, meaning your ability to think clearly may be affected, fatigue, headaches, and mood changes. Headaches. Headaches are often associated with caffeine withdrawal. Headaches happen because caffeine constricts your brain's blood vessels. This constriction slows cerebral blood flow. When you cease your caffeine consumption, the once constricted blood vessels expand. After you stop using caffeine, blood flow to the brain increases. Headaches are from the brain adjusting to the increase in blood flow. Once the brain has adapted, the withdrawal headaches will stop. Duration and severity of the withdrawal headaches will vary. Tiredness. Fatigue is another dreaded symptom of caffeine withdrawal. Caffeine improves energy and reduces drowsiness by blocking adenosine receptors. Adenosine is a neurotransmitter that can cause fatigue in some circumstances. Once caffeine is eliminated, many people feel tired and fatigued. While fatigue can be frustrating, allowing your brain's neurotransmitters to stabilize should lead to more sustainable energy. Caffeine is quickly absorbed into the bloodstream and excreted through urine. Tolerance increases with use. This can lead to frequent use and dependency and therefore a worsening of withdrawal symptoms. Mood changes. Negative cognitive and emotional effects can also be a consequence of caffeine withdrawal. Caffeine stimulates the release of hormones like adrenaline, cortisol, and epinephrine. 
Caffeine also increases the levels of neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine. If you have developed a mental and physiological dependence to caffeine, you can experience feelings of anxiety, difficulty concentrating, and a depressed mood. This should only occur while your body is adjusting to the lack of its usual source of stimuli. How to treat withdrawal symptoms. If you decide you want to decrease or quit caffeine, try these things to work through your withdrawal symptoms. Taper consumption instead of going cold turkey. If you are used to drinking coffee, try half decaf, half regular, and gradually wean yourself off. Avoid sources of caffeine. Make sure you are not accidentally reintroducing caffeine. Check labels on packaged sodas, tonics, and teas, and even packaged foods. Hydrate. Dehydration can make withdrawal symptoms worse. Take a pain reliever. Take an over-the-counter pain reliever like ibuprofen, acetaminophen, or aspirin to help with any withdrawal headaches. Get plenty of sleep. You will probably feel tired when you stop consuming caffeine, so help combat this by getting at least seven to nine hours a night. And boost energy in other ways. Examples of this would be going outside for a walk. Is caffeine good for you? The bad. Those who overconsume caffeine at toxic levels can display features of caffeine intoxication, also referred to as caffeinism. Symptoms of this form of intoxication can include anxiety, agitation, restlessness, insomnia, gastrointestinal disturbances, tremors, tachycardia or a rapid heart rate, and psychomotor agitation. The good. Benefits of caffeine may include increased metabolism, lowered risk of neurodegenerative diseases, protection against heart disease, liver protection, reduced risk of hypertension, and improved asthma control. Much of the data collected on caffeine is observational in nature. There have been few randomized controlled studies. In 2013, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, acknowledged that for healthy adults, up to 400 milligrams of caffeine in a day, or up to about four cups of coffee, was not associated with dangerous effects. A 2017 review of studies reported that up to 300 milligrams of caffeine, or about three cups per day, is safe for pregnant women. Remember, even one cup of coffee daily can cause withdrawal symptoms. It's also important to note that a cup is eight ounces, and many mugs and to-go cups hold up to 16 ounces or more. Also, keep in mind caffeine tolerance and the body's response is slightly different for each person. It's a good idea to discuss caffeine consumption with your doctor. The takeaway. Caffeine is thought to be the most frequently used psychoactive substance in the world. In the United States, it's the second most consumed beverage after water. Caffeine functions as a central nervous system stimulant, and even a small amount used daily can cause withdrawal symptoms. These symptoms can result in caffeine dependency. The severity and duration of caffeine withdrawal symptoms vary from person to person, and your genetic makeup can play a part in how much coffee you consume. You just listened to the post titled, When Does Caffeine Withdrawal Stop? by Anna Goddard with Healthline.com. Have you been using Mint to manage your finances? First, the bad news. Mint is shutting down. And now, the good news. There's a better alternative. Our sponsor, Monarch Money. Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and loving it. Maybe you're saving for a down payment, a wedding, a dream vacation, your kid's college. I've found that Monarch makes it easy to help you reach your financial goals, whatever they are. I definitely wouldn't be able to allocate my finances or plan as clearly without help from Monarch. In fact, Monarch is the top-rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all of your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com OFD. After trying out Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash OFD. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash OFD for your extended 30-day free trial. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Look, I love my coffee. Somehow, my love of coffee started at a very young age. Like most families, my parents had a coffee maker in a permanent spot on the countertop in our kitchen. 
I was obsessed with how it worked. I would watch my parents fill the dispenser with a paper filter and pour in the grounds. I would then watch them pour water in the top through what looked like a grated vent and waiting for the brown liquid to drip into the pot below. The sights, sounds, and smells, it was instant love. Once in a while, I would find a half cup of leftover coffee on our kitchen table, and I would ask my mom if I could try it and take a sip. Even though it tasted bitter, I loved it. That love continues to this day. Now, I might sound like a coffee-crazed fanatic. Even so, I don't drink more than two cups of coffee a day. This is because I've realized that any more than that, and I have trouble falling asleep at night. So I seem to be sensitive to the effects of caffeine, at least in the form of coffee. And when I don't get my two cups, I experience withdrawal symptoms like the ones described in the article. So I do enjoy my daily coffee, but in moderation. But if you realize that, you know what, coffee just isn't your cup of, uh, tea? That doesn't work. Anywho, if you don't consume any now, there's no reason to start. All right, that'll do it for me for today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow for the Friday Q&A episode and where your optimal life awaits.